I'm Secretary Deb Holland, and I'm honored to join you from the ancestral homelands of the Anacostan and Piscataway people on what President Biden has proclaimed as National Missing or Murdered Indigenous Persons Awareness Day. I wish we didn't need to be here. I wish that this day was obsolete and that we didn't have to keep fighting year after year for our people to be honored and respected. But we are here. And I want to use today to shine a light on the national crisis of missing and murdered Indigenous peoples and give space to others to share the work they are doing on this issue. Everyone deserves to feel safe in their communities, but the MMIP crisis is one that Native communities have faced since the dawn of colonization. For too long, this issue has been swept under the rug by our government with a lack of urgency, attention, or funding. The rates of missing persons cases and violence against American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian communities are disproportionate, alarming, and unacceptable. It's heartbreaking to know that our loved ones are at an increased risk of disappearing without warning, leaving families and communities devastated. I want to extend my gratitude to the organizers, advocates, and Native women who have been shedding light on the MMIP crisis for decades. People who have had an empty chair at their kitchen tables, loved ones who tirelessly search for their relatives, service providers who hear the heartbreaking stories from family members of the missing. I want you to know that I see you and I stand with you. In our first year, there is much that the Biden-Harris administration has done to take this issue seriously. As many of you know, last year, I announced the formation of a new missing and murdered unit within the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Office of Justice Services to provide leadership and direction for cross-departmental and interagency work involving missing and murdered American Indians and Alaska Natives. The MMU is marshalling law enforcement resources across federal agencies and throughout Indian country to focus on this crisis. Since the launch of the MMU, the department has built out personnel and increased infrastructure capacity by launching new offices. Today, 17 BIA offices located throughout the nation have at least one agent dedicated to solving missing and murdered cases for American Indians and Alaska Natives. In December, the BIA announced the launch of its new website dedicated to solving missing and murdered cases in Indian country. The website is bia.gov slash MMU. That's bia.gov slash MMU. The site is an important tool to help law enforcement families and communities to share critical information about missing and murdered individuals that can help the MMU solve cases and give closure to families. The website showcases individual missing and murdered case profiles that can be quickly shared via social media and other digital media to raise the visibility of victims. It also provides multiple pathways to submit important tips and other case information that may help investigators with the detection or investigation of an offense committed in Indian country. The MMU has enabled the department to expand its collaborative efforts with other agencies, such as working to enhance the DOJ's National Missing and Unidentified Person System. Staff are also developing strategic partnerships with additional stakeholders, such as the FBI's Behavioral, Behavioral Analysis Units, the FBI Forensic Laboratory, the U.S. Marshals Missing Child Unit, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. This unit and Interior will continue to engage in collaborative efforts with tribal, federal, and state stakeholders to ensure accurate data and enhance community outreach. The MMU is a critical tool in our work to address this crisis. And today we announced steps for another. In Congress, I led the Not Invisible Act. Now in partnership with the Justice Department and with extensive engagement with tribes and other stakeholders, we're putting that law into action. Today, our agencies announced the membership of the new Not Invisible Act Commission, which we formed last year. 
For the first time, the Interior and Justice Department will be guided by an advisory committee composed of law enforcement, tribal leaders, federal partners, service providers, family members of missing and murdered individuals, and most importantly, survivors. This commission will ensure that we hear the voices of those who are most impacted by this issue. It includes diverse experiences, backgrounds, and geography to provide balanced points of view. The commission will hold hearings, take testimony, and receive evidence to develop recommendations for the federal government to combat violent crimes against Indigenous people. The missing and murdered Indigenous peoples crisis is centuries in the making, and it will take a focused effort and time to unravel the many threads that contribute to the alarming rates of these cases. I'm grateful to those of you who rang the alarm and gave a voice to the missing. My heart goes out to the families of loved ones who were impacted by violence. We'll keep working to address this issue, and together, I believe, we will provide justice for survivors and families. And now I'll turn the floor over to Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco, who will share recorded remarks for today's event. I'm pleased to join you for this important event on a day the President has dedicated to highlighting the crisis of missing or murdered Indigenous persons. This is an opportunity to reflect on the violence endured by far too many Native persons for far too long. It's also a chance to reaffirm our commitment to bringing justice and answers to grieving communities. Today marks a major milestone in those efforts as we take the next step in launching our joint commission under the Not Invisible Act. The mission is an essential one to reduce violence against American Indians and Alaska Natives. Today, you'll hear from several tribal leaders about how important the commission is to that work. And I'd like to extend a special thanks to Secretary Holland for her leadership here, both during her time in Congress and through the Department of the Interior's efforts to establish this commission. Today's announcement is a testament to her dedicated work and to the many people across Native communities who fought to make their voices heard. The Department of Justice is committed to supporting the work of the commission. We're pleased that the director of our Office of Tribal Justice, Tracy Tulu, will serve as a co-chair of the commission and that he'll be joined by representatives from across the department, including from both our law enforcement and grant-making components. No one agency can solve this problem alone. And we're also grateful that the commission will include representatives from our partners at the Departments of the Interior and Health and Human Services. But it is the appointees just announced by Secretary Holland who come from outside the federal government who will form the backbone of the commission. These commissioners represent a diverse range of experiences, expertise, and perspectives. And critically, they include survivors who can speak firsthand to the urgency of the commission's work. They also include tribal leaders and members who know best what their communities need when it comes to making them safer. The commission will issue recommendations to both the Department of Justice and the Department of the Interior on how to improve intergovernmental coordination, as well as how to identify best practices for federal, state, local, and tribal law enforcement when responding to the violence directed at American Indians and Alaska Natives. I know that Native voices haven't always been heard on these issues, but this administration is committed to doing better, and today's announcement reflects that commitment. More broadly, the Commission also demonstrates the emphasis that the Biden-Harris administration has placed on addressing the crisis of missing or murdered Indigenous people. Last November, the President issued a new executive order, which reflected our whole-of-government response to promoting public safety in Native communities. The same day, I launched a new steering committee, which is dedicated to marshalling the Justice Department's personnel and resources to the MMIP crisis. Since it launched, the steering committee has made tribal engagement the cornerstone of its work, including through consultations and engagement with stakeholders. While those conversations are ongoing, 
the department is already moving to address the concerns we've heard from you. First, we've heard a clear and consistent message that the department must do more to reach Native victims, survivors, and families. That's why I'm pleased to announce that today, we're creating a new position to spearhead our efforts, a National Native American Outreach Services Liaison. The liaison will work in our Executive Office of U.S. Attorneys and help ensure that victims and their families have a voice within the department as they navigate all stages of the criminal justice system. This new position is part of a larger effort to raise awareness and increase outreach on the MMIP crisis. Last month, the department launched a new page on our Tribal Justice and Safety website dedicated to elevating the issue of MMIP. This new website serves as a central hub of resources for families and victims and also promotes transparency on the department's law enforcement efforts. Last week, I also had the opportunity, along with Secretary Holland, to celebrate the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act and its important provisions to promote safety in tribal communities. That includes expanded special tribal criminal jurisdiction, which recognizes the authority of tribal courts to exercise jurisdiction over crimes of family violence, including child abuse, that too often are precursors to missing or murdered person cases. Of course, we know that there is much more work to do, and this day is a reminder of just how critical those efforts are. Today and every day, the federal government must be committed to working with tribal nations to address the crisis of missing or murdered indigenous people, and I expect the commission to play a major role in doing so. The Department of Justice is eager to support and learn from the commission's work. Thank you. We are so grateful to Deputy Attorney General Monaco and the Department of Justice for their partnership as we move the Not Invisible Act Commission forward.